What's up, Sugar Bushes? So if you're like me, you love true crime. Anything, murders, mystery, it's all, whatever. True crime, I love it. I listen to it all the time. I'm currently binging My Favorite Murder, which is a, a murder podcast. And if you haven't heard of them, I highly suggest checking them out. They are top tier A+. Um, so with that being said, we're going to do start our own little true crime series. So uh, if you have been on the internet at all, you know who Jeffrey Epstein is. And I will humor you and give you a little rundown. Uh, he was a man who was ultra wealthy and had connections to all some of the most powerful people in the world. Uh, he was also a very well-known child predator. Uh, and then when he got arrested, he committed suicide and before he could release the names of anybody in the pedophile ring. Um, you're also aware, should be, that um, Mr. Epstein had his own island. His own island where he could get away. It was like a paradise for him and he could bring all the ultra powerful wealthy people who were his friends. And if essentially do whatever he wanted without getting in trouble. So I'll let your mind run with that thought. Well, um, if you weren't aware, that's not the first time that someone has purchased an island and used it, used it to exploit children. It's thought that Epstein got the idea from uh, a man in the 70s known as Francis D. Sheldon. Who is Francis D. Sheldon, you might ask? Well, I'm going to tell you in our true crime segment here. Okay, so... Francis, um, by no means, was a real creepy guy. He was very charming, as most predators are. Very charming, very charismatic, put together. The man, he had a master's degree. He had a degree from Yale. Like, he was uh, he was the heir to, like, a, a lumber baron. Um, and he was just all around a very like and respected guy, such as Epstein. Um, and very like, well-respected man. Um, but unknown to everyone else, he was an intense child predator. Um, so what does someone who has too much money that they don't know what to do with, what do they do? They buy an island. Now, this took place in Michigan in the 1970s. The island Mr. Sheldon bought was called North Fox Island, which he rebranded to Brother Paul's Nature Camp. Now, Brother Paul's Nature Camp was exactly how it sounded. It was a nature camp where kids could go explore, they could go have fun in the wilderness, and the best thing about this, the most appealing thing about this, is that it was free. You didn't have to pay for it. So think of this, you are a, a mother or a father in Detroit, Michigan, in the 70s, living below the poverty line. It's no secret that Detroit was a rough place to grow up in, um, and someone, a recruiter, comes by and says, hey, um, I know a place where uh, I can take your kid and they can go and they can have all the fun in the world. They can hike in nature, they can bird watch, they can have fun, they're going to be praising Jesus, and it's just going to be all around a good experience and we're not going to charge you a dime. So to any family is like, yeah, of course I would like I would like to give my child that experience because we can't pay for something like that. I would love to give my child that experience. Um, and so that's how they recruited kids. So Sheldon didn't work alone, obviously. Um, his partner in crime, Gerald Richards, who was a Catholic school gym teacher, uh, an aspiring politician, and uh, moonlighted as a magician. Now, let's go ahead and stop there. Individually, there's nothing wrong with those professions, but put them all together and it just sends off every red flag in my fucking head. I don't, something about those, um, you have the Catholic school gym teacher, which children, moonlighting as a magician, children, and you have a politician, piece of garbage. So something about those three um, career fields really sets off the red flags in my head, but you know, maybe that's just me, I don't know. So anyways, so, Gerald Frank Richards was um, someone who was also in on this. He was also set up to recruit children. And like I said before, that's how he did it. They basically were like, hey, you know, I'm gonna give your kid the most best opportunity in the world. They're gonna go hiking, they're gonna see birds, they're gonna cut lumber and do man stuff, and it's gonna be a great time. So they recruited boys ages from seven to 16. So nobody thought anything of this. You know, Sheldon was a well-respected member of the community, as most predators are. Um, he did tons of articles with the Detroit Free Press, you know. Um, he, people, he, people knew his name, and when you thought of him, you didn't think of, oh, this guy's kind of shady. You thought, oh man, what a good guy. You know, he's helping these kids. Um, he's, he's, you know, 
helping these kids out. He's building a better community. You know, he bought an entire island for the children. You know, what an amazing person. Well, obviously not because he was a real piece of work. Here we have Brother Paul's Island uh, giving disadvantaged kids the experience of nature. That was their slogan. They were tutor, counsel, praise Jesus, the whole nine yards. Now, I will say that the things that happened on this island kind of got swept under the rug because at the time there was another murder about and which was dubbed the snow murders or the baby i think his name was the babysitter killer who was someone who would murder children and then when he left their body he would leave their body clean their hair cut their nails clipped there was one instance where the family went on uh the news and was like we really just want our son to come home please return him to us safely so we can feed him his favorite meal of kentucky fried chicken well, that boy's body was discovered not, I think, a, a week or so later, and the last meal that he had was Kentucky Fried Chicken. So they dubbed him the Babysitter Killer. So the things happening on bro in Brother Paul's nature camp kind of got swept under the rug because there was a child killer about. But back to our, our original story. So I will say that it, if you have children, uh, this may be hard to listen to because we're kind of going to, I'm not going to go into great detail. I don't want to get banned or anything, but I'm going to kind of give you an idea of what this, what really this island was. So there were only two reasons this island existed, to dodge taxes and to exploit children. In the 60s and 70s, Sheldon was dubbed the executive of uh, CP. I'm going to go ahead and say that. I don't want to say any trigger words, but put, the, put, your, put it together. You know what I mean. Uh, basically, he was the executive of exploiting children. Now, um, under the guise of, you know, praise Jesus, counseling, tutoring, what I said before, Brother Paul's Nature Camp, Brother Paul's Nature Camp was single-handedly one of the biggest manufacturers of CP in the 60s and 70s. So I want you to think of this island um, as a Netflix subscription for the super wealthy predators. Basically, they sponsored... Sheldon's Island giving him millions and millions of dollars and in return and in return they got the 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 content of what was created on that island delivered to their door and not only that they could hop on their private jet fly over to North Fox Island and abuse any child that happened to be on that island at the time it's freaking sickening um I don't know what it is about super wealthy people and wanting to exploit children. I don't understand what the appeal is at. Like, how are you that sick of a person? So like I said, the only reason the island existed was to exploit children. It was literally the Hollywood of CP. That's all they did. The camps, the, the counselors, the nature walks, the bird watching, it was all a ruse. So downtrodden families would send their young boys to this camp and they would be exploited to the uber wealthy for money. and that was its only reason it existed and it's mind-boggling that it just went it went on for as long as it did it wasn't forever i think it was only like two years but st think of how many kids were 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 just taken advantage of in that that amount of time now i know what you're thinking holy hell how are these dudes getting away with it this that and the other but i want you to understand this was not the only predator ring operating in the United States at the time. You had individuals like Christopher Bush who would send out m newsletters basically stating how you can create your own predator ring and get away with it. And, and come on now, for, for, for crying out loud, Sheldon and, and Richard, uh, Sheldon and Richards met through a uh, CP magazine called better life monthly there was a, a, a it was a magazine dedicated to the exploitation of children like how 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 did this get slid under the rug i understand there were more murders there were other murders happening at the time but what in the hell now let's recap real quick before we end it francis and richards basically created this entire island dedicated to the exploitation of children. We're talking, um, I, I gotta be honest with you, I th it was worse than Epstein's. It was literally the Hollywood for, for CP. Um, and the uber wealthy would be able to subscribe and get content sent to their, uh, sent to their, uh, sent to their homes. Uh, and then they were able to fly, take their private jets to that island and exploit the children on the island at the time. And since, you know, it was the Hollywood of CP, they were able to bring home souvenirs. 
Now, um, like I said, not the only ring running at the time. You know, there were people like Christopher Bush and others who basically sent out new newsletters that were like, hey, this is how you can do this and get away with it. Um, so, July 23rd, 1976, Richards was arrested. Now, before he was, and while, when he got arrested, he admitted to destroying a vast amount of, of CP that was created on the island. But before his arrest, he was able to tip off Francis and let him know what was about to happen. So Richards is arrested. He tips Sheldon off, and of course, what does Sheldon do? He jump. He he transfers over twenty-two million dollars into another shell company, uh, and jumps into Cessna and takes off. His fugitive status did not stop him from being able to get those assets, and it is said that he died in Amsterdam in the nineties. I don't know what's worse, to be honest. The fact that. Uh, the fact that all these young boys were exploited and just abused um, as a as a victim of former abuse like that, I can. It's just it's mind boggling to me. You know, I, I feel for those victims, and I it's it's horrific. But Sheldon also never paid for his crimes. He never got away with it. There was no justice at the end of this. He, they never got closure, you know. At least sometimes, you know, you get you can take solace in the fact that you know this person's in jail now. And Richards is the only one that went down with the ship. Um, he warned Sheldon, and Sheldon, like I said, jumped ship and is said to have died in the ninety died in the nineties in Amsterdam. Yeah, that's the story of the first OG Predator Island, basically. Um, if I hope you enjoyed this little true crime segment. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of it. I love true crime, I love murder, doesn't matter what it is, mystery, anything about it, creepy ghosts, all that, I'm, I'm there for it. Um, if you have one you would like me to cover, please leave it in the comments and I will surely get to it, because like I said, we're going to be doing a lot more of these. I also apologize for me saying um a lot, uh, I know I'm not that good at speaking yet, but hopefully once I do more of these I'll get better and better, and the best way to get better is to practice, of course, so give me reasons to practice. Uh, I'm sorry the editing's a little bit choppy too, I'm still trying to figure out Lightworks, um, so if you're good with that, help a brother out, because I kind of need it. Uh, but like I said, uh, we're going to be doing much more of these. Uh, if you have one you would like me to cover, please, please, please leave it in the in the comments. And, and this one was a bit rough. Uh, it's a very rough topic for me as well. Um, it's kind of sickening just to know that this person got away with it. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I know how hard it is to work through that kind of trauma because um, I'm still trying to work through it. And it's taking a toll on my adult life, but it, it is what it is. Um, but nonetheless, uh, thank you guys for stopping by and listening. Um, like I said, please leave me some suggestions in the comments, uh, please like and subscribe uh, for more, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Uh, I will see you again very soon. I love you so much, and I hope you have the best day.